It's time for the health segment and this discussion is stemming from the revelation by Ms. V that she had suffered depression for two years. Couldn't speak to no one except her friend, only friend in the industry, Ifia, and her family. And so she went on a hiatus for about two years and there were lots of rumors as to why she was not performing or releasing songs anymore. Little did we know that she was suffering depression. Now, according to the World Health Organization, depression is the main cause of disability worldwide. And that's a big issue, especially among celebrities. I mean, of course, everybody experiences it. But the belief is that if you are wealthy or if you are enjoying some level of fame, then you really don't have any relation at all with depression, especially because you're living your best life. Is that really true? And why do people get so shocked when celebrities and popular people come out and uh, reveal that they have been depressed or are suffering depression? One of the biggest names worldwide when it comes to the issue of battling depression is Prince Harry, who said that he suffered a two decade long um, battle after his mother's death as well. And now he's working to end stigma around mental illness. And so we're speaking to Superintendent Dr. Birgit Ajwa Nuro Penyin, and she is a psychiatrist. Later as well, we'll speak to an artiste manager who has worked with a lot of these big names to find out what really is the problem amongst our personalities in the country. Thank you so much for joining me, Superintendent. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Good morning Good to morning you. to you as well. First of all, I want you to explain depression for anybody who's new to it or probably doesn't understand what depression is, especially because people think that anxiety um, is the same as depression or sorrow is the same as depression. But mm -hmm. how different is that? So um, I'm glad that I've been given this opportunity to talk about depression. Oftentimes, people mistaken depression for sadness. Yeah. And in regular parlance, we can say that I'm depressed, which is a feeling. Mm. But um, it's important that we clarify there's a difference between feeling depressed and having depression. Now, having depression is a clinical diagnosis. Mm. And oftentimes, we call it a major depressive disorder. But for um, not wanting to say all that, we just say depression. So it is known as a mood disorder, and it is characterized by extreme sadness. Okay. And the importance here we have to know between regular sadness and depression is the intensity and the duration of the condition. All right. And you mentioned something earlier about why um, do celebrities like get depressed. Um, it's important to find out, or it's important to know that with sadness, Oftentimes, people can tell you why they are sad. But okay. when someone is clinically depressed, it's not easy for them to tell you why they are depressed. Mm. And so it is not about this happened to me or that happened to me that brought about depression. And so once we, once we mix the two things, sadness and depression, that's why we can't understand why someone could be. Okay. But you're saying clinically depressed. Yes. So that means that I can't just sit home and assume that I'm depressed just because I'm feeling some type of way. You can use the word feeling depressed because yeah. that's regular English. Yeah. But to have depression, that's a clinical diagnosis. And that one, the doctor has to and be the, the one to be Yes, the doctor has. But there are lots of people who don't speak up. There are lots of people who don't even know what they're experiencing. So at what point do I then go to a doctor for him to diagnose? Because it might be too late. So with regards to too late, I'll say it's never too late to seek help. But it's important to know there are signs and symptoms. Okay. So as I said, extreme sadness. <laughs> Um, lasting most of the days for at least two weeks mm. and there's no variation like you can't nothing makes you happy you are not reactive to emotion so we have the extreme sadness then we have something called loss of pleasure so things that you usually found pleasurable you no longer find pleasure in doing them and then we have a volition, which is like lack of motivation. So you recognize that people who are experiencing depression lack the ability to do stuff. They don't want to do stuff. And the world looks bleak. They are not interested in doing stuff. Then you'd also notice things like change in sleep pattern, either not sleeping enough, which we'll call insomnia, or sleeping too much, which is hypersomnia. Oh. Yes. And you're sleeping a bit too much? Yes. That could be a... Yes, it is a... Yes, hypersomnia. And then we have things like changes in weight, either loss or gain of weight. Mm -hmm. um, usually 
five percent or more of your body weight within a period of a month mm -hmm. so weight loss where you're not trying to lose weight is a sign then we have psycho uh, we have moto either retardation so you just find the person being slower than usual mm -hmm. or restless hyper moto and that's where you find them pacing wringing their hands grinding their teeth and then we'll now get to the more severe where you'll have suicidal ideations, mm -hmm. hopelessness, feelings of worthlessness, guilt. So the person is feeling this. Other people can observe it. Okay. And I always say that sometimes people don't want to speak out. But if you have a loved one and you're noticing changes in their behavior, you can approach them and ask them what's right. going on. Well, before we move on, like I, I mentioned, we're focusing on depression amongst celebrities and we have uh, a man who's worked with all the big names in the industry all the up-and-coming artists as well and so he is deeply rooted in their day-to-day -day activities and we want to find out from him um you know what life is like as a celebrity and why it's so easy for some of them to feel depressed so i have kewa on the line hello good morning good morning thank you for joining you? me on air how are you doing i'm very well all right. How about you? I'm fine, thank you. I believe you came across that interview with Ms. V where she revealed that she had been depressed for many years. Yes, I think I saw that. First of all, if I may ask, what did you make of her revelation? Um, well, when I, when I heard that, I saw that, it was pretty sad for me. And uh, the reason why I... I I felt a bit uncomfortable around it and about it is because um, depression can bring you to a state where you may possibly even lose your life. And so when people go through depression like that, it means that they really need help. Yeah. Uh, yes. And so, uh, and you see, for me, I would always say that the best help you can get with depression, yes, I... I know that clinically they are grabbing, you can get great help. Yeah. You know, and all that. But I always want to relate it to spiritual because you see depression is simply dejection. Okay? Mm. And dejection is a very a certain state where your spirit is low. So it's low spirit. Mm -hmm. Which means that it has everything to do with your spirit. We are Spirit, we have a soul and we live in a body. And so you, I, I have the, I'm of the opinion every time that any time we are solving rejection issues and we are just looking at using, uh, looking at the body area, just I mean, maybe the feeling and all that, it goes beyond that. It's, it's, really, it's just spiritual for me. Okay. And so if you, if, and what is the spiritual? Uh, thing I'm talking about. If we can put our hope in God, yeah. who is the author and the finisher of our faith, who gives everything that you need. Mm. You see, if you you can depend on God and not man. Usually, uh, uh, depression is also as a result of uh, what your expectations are and you haven't found. Yeah. You see, and so usually you would have to depend on man for your expectations to okay. be met. Uh, but I believe that it's when you depend on God for your expectations to be met, rejection cannot set in. All right. Kewa, well, you interact with a lot of these personalities. And we've heard, I mean, there have been rumors about some who may have battled it at a point, are currently battling it as well. What do you think are some of the reasons why popular people experience depression? Because... The world thinks that once you're popular, you have fame, you have wealth, mm -hmm. life is good for you. And so you shouldn't even experience mm -hmm. this because everybody loves you. Maybe. Good. Yes. And, and that, that, that notion has to be changed also. Um, uh, I, I was dealing with a very young artist who, after he, uh, he, he, he released a song and he was all over, mm. and he, he walks through the malls and everybody is like calling his name and he thought that that it means that he uh, he should automatically have what will make him happy. Yeah. And usually it's the money, the cars, and those those are the things we look at. And 
uh, when he was not finding or seeing that in his life, mm. the pressure from society brought him depression. And so uh, it was. It got to a point where it was it, it was too much for him. And, and if we hadn't dealt with it with, uh, like with what I'm saying, that you always have to resort to your source, and that is Jesus, that, that's God. But why is it so uh, difficult for them to speak okay. out? Yeah, um, yeah uh, that depression. Will, it will be. You will not. You will not even find. Uh, uh, it will be difficult for you to even point a finger at what exactly is bringing you the depression. Okay. You see, aha. And the, the third thing is family pressure. Mm. Because when you're an artist and you're doing well, uh, your songs are all over. Family uh, would, would, would want to see that in money. I mean, they want to see that that's bringing you money and bringing you all the wealth and all that. But it takes a bit of a time. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. Well, well, this is all time will allow us. I'm sure that at, a, at a, the right time, we'll have you in the studios to speak to us more on this particular topic. So thank you so much. I've been speaking to Kewa, um, who works with a lot of these artists. He's a manager. He's a sound um, engineer and much more. But in the studios, I still have Dr. Birgit Ajua Nopeni, who is a psychologist. She is superintendent. Oh, psychiatrist. Pardon me. Psychiatrist. And we're just talking about some of the symptoms as well. He's talked about the expectations um, that are placed on celebrities. Reason being the reason uh, how they get depressed so easily. Have you ever come across any of these? Have you treated any of them? And what were some of the reasons why you think they fell into depression? Um, firstly, I'd like to clarify something. Um, not that I'm negating the spirituality of it, but yeah. it is very dangerous to reduce depression to lack of faith. Okay. So when you say stuff like that, it definitely adds to the stigma because assuming you're a, you're a faithful Christian or Muslim mm -hmm. or whatever faith you may follow and you fall into depression, you begin to doubt your faith because am I depressed because I don't believe in God? And that adds to the stigma because then you don't want people to believe that you have lost your faith. Mm. So to say depression is purely spiritual, I'll just caution him. I mean, I understand that a lot of people think that. Mm -hmm. But because of that thought, that feeds into the stigma, making people less likely to talk about it. Because that immediately indicates that you don't believe in God as much as you should. Okay. Or you don't. He mentioned having hope in God, in God and trusting and in God. That, yeah. So that means if I get depression, then I don't trust God. So let's not just limit it to okay, that. Okay, okay. So when we, come about, when we talk about causes of depression, we have to recognize that there are biological, psychological, and social factors. Mm. So when we talk about biological factors, genetics plays a huge role it does? in depression. Exactly. So you would find out there's a 30 to 70% chance if you study twin studies, you recognize that genes play a huge role. So if you have a family history of mood disorder, you're more likely to be depressed. I see. Then we also have structural things in the brain. So the parts of the brain that are responsible for cognition, emotion, etc., we call something called hypoperfusion. There's not enough blood going there. Mm. Then we have neurotransmitters, who, which are responsible for emotions. So we have serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. Dopamine is the pleasure hormone. Yeah. Reduce dopamine. It's clear. Serotonin, which is most implicated in depression, is low. So that's biology. I see. So things about the person's body. Mm -hmm. Psychology is things about the person's cognition. All right. So something as basic as resilience, childhood traumas, all play a role. So even how you view the world, what we call your internal locus of control, your locus of control can be internal or external. Yeah. So if something happens to you, you can either blame yourself or say it's as a result of the world. Yeah. That's the psychology of a person. Then social is what we see. So oftentimes it is the social aspect we see. Breakup, um, death, loss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because we only understand the social, and not recognize the biology and psychology of a person, then we say, there's no reason for you to be mm -hmm. sad. 
But assuming someone has a biological predisposition to depression, yeah. a psychological predisposition to depression, when something social happens to the person, they can get depressed. Because they, because they have, have other things. All right. So but what if you don't have those other things and then something happens to you socially? That could also lead it, to... It, yes, but uh, that's what I'm saying. Does it trigger I'm, the... the psychological aspect of it no i'm saying that it is an interplay of okay. biology psychology and, and social. social okay so one thing on its own does not cause depression that's why i'm just saying that we should be careful in saying spiritual exactly or okay. psychological or this once you understand that it's an interplay of factors then you understand why someone can get depression how do i deal with it then because now you are giving me the medical yes. explanation yes but i'm i don't have any medical background and so i won't really understand what's even wrong with me in the first place how do i deal with some of these things when i identify the symptoms first seek help <laughs> but i can't speak out because i'm worried yes i don't trust anybody yes because i feel like they're going to tell the rest of the world that yeah. this is what i'm going through you know but number one you don't have to trust anybody you can come to a doctor where there's confidentiality I don't even trust my family you want me to walk to a total stranger and tell the stranger about S my problems so that's point number one point number two mm -hmm. this is where I always talk about social support people around people should be more sensitive to changes mm. we are in a society where if I come to work and I don't greet you that day, you get offended. Yeah. You'll never stop to wonder what's going on with me. Mm. You'll just be like, she's, <laughs> she's like feeling herself. She yeah. refused to greet. You know people. You can recognize changes. When something is going wrong with someone who's close to you, you notice it. And you can go and help the person seek help. That's me invading. It's not you invading, because at the end of the day, it's help that they need. Okay. So um, when it comes to mental illness, not only depression, I always tell people that don't leave it on the person who's suffering. Because mental illness, aside the stigma, it affects your ability to th how you think about yourself. Mm -hmm. Depression is one thing that makes someone feel absolutely worthless, not even worthy of help. I see. And so it is important for those around. That's why I like talking about it, not for the person experiencing it, but for those around to be able to recognize it in loved ones and help them seek help. Okay, well, KY is back on the line and um, he is trying to clarify. Um, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll try and get him in a few minutes because he wants to expatiate on the spiritual aspects of his explanation because he says he didn't say it's entirely spiritual so we'll try and get him back um on the line but yes you're talking about looking out for the person next to you social support if i'm making an effort to find out what's wrong with you you pass by me you don't say hi i come to you and i ask what's wrong is everything okay and you shut me out i really can't do much i disagree and that's what i'm saying we are so fixed on feeling that we can't do anything if someone were supposed to um, have a stroke right now and say, don't take me to the hospital, you wouldn't listen to that person. Yeah. Exactly. However, when it comes to mental illness, somehow you feel that you have to listen to the person. And so if someone's like, no, I'm having a heart attack, I don't want to go to the hospital, you'll yeah. take them to the hospital. So it is this dichotomy in our mind feeling that mental illness is not <coughs> illness. Yeah. It is illness. And the way you'll treat anybody with a other physical condition, mm. be aware that you can do the same for mental illness. I see. Now, okay, I have to see a doctor as well. That's yes. important. But what's the process like in seeing a doctor? That's what I mean. So if I'm going through depression and I see a doctor, what's the process like? I'm not sure I understand. What I mean question. is, so I'm going through depression. Yes. You're telling me that I need to be able to speak out to other people, but that's not help, you know, happening. If I come to a doctor, what is the, what am I supposed to go through in order for me to get over my depression? So what is your process like okay. as so a doctor? For, as a psychiatrist, yeah. I tend to deal with the more biological aspect. So as the doctor, I tend to prescribe. But prescription is not the only treatment for depression mm. you must understand depression a is categorized into mild moderate and severe I see. so depending so the first step is you come to a doctor 
you're assessed, you're clacked, mm. and you're given your diagnosis. And what, depending on the severity, treatment will begin. As I said, it's an interplay between biological, psychological, and social. Yeah. So treatment is also biological, psychological, and social. So re with regards to psychological, we have psychotherapy. So mm. that's where we have the psychologist. Okay. And you have different forms of therapy, cognitive, behavioral, interpersonal, that would help. Social, things like family support, mm. things like exercise, things like church. Okay. Do you understand? Yeah. So all these things. If it's severe, however, oftentimes a patient is admitted and medication is started. Mm. So it is a it is a treatable condition. It is not a condition that can't be managed. I see. Let me go over and read a few messages as I still interact with the doctor. And if you have any questions to ask, uh, you can do so. Hello, good morning, Bella. In fact, TV3 New Day is blessed. Uh, Pius from Offenso Denton. I'll skip the other, uh, <laughs> the other part of the message. Bella, please give me the doctor's number. My girlfriend is suffering from depression for the past four months and we need serious help. She'll drop her contact uh, before you go. If you always lose a bet, can it cause depression? And someone is asking, can miscarriage cause this, uh, depression? Doctor. We're talking about miscarriage, yes. So oftentimes when we are dealing with um, depression, as I mentioned earlier, mm. we are not expecting there to be a signif significant um, thing that someone can point to, so to speak. All right. So with miscarriage, someone can experience grief. So if like a death, you yeah. can experience grief. Mm. Grief is not depression. Yeah. Grief is sadness. Mm -hmm. However, if it goes on much longer or more intense then we can say that the person had a miscarriage and has depression yeah so oftentimes we say they are precipitant to mental illness so the miscarriage could be a precipitant to depression but someone being sad immediately after a miscarriage or a month after a miscarriage is expected yeah. because the person is grieving but if you have a baby, you yes. should be excited about it. But yes. then there are women who suffer depression yes. after having babies. Yes. Why? So this is where, once again, we talk about the hormones and the neurotransmitters. Mm. So you know pregnancy naturally is a very stressful time. It's a hyperdynamic state, as we say in medicine. And it's a very stressful time for any woman, mm -hmm. even men. And so um, there are a lot of things that play, as I said, psychology, social. And having a baby does not necessarily mean that you wanted the child. Mm -hmm. does not mean you're prepared for the child. There are various things that come into play that can lead someone. So we have regular baby blues, yeah. which can go on its own. But we can get postpartum depression that needs to be treated and even postpartum psychosis, yeah. of which the woman wants to kill the child. Hmm. Okay, that's a topic for another day, but let's read... Messages again. Ora Christy Leslie says, how can you determine if an illness is causing depression or depression is causing an illness? And I've heard lots of warnings about drug interactions with certain depression medicines. What are they? How long does depression last? And do children get depression? If yes, what can we do to help them? And lastly, is depression a mental illness? I believe you've already answered number five. Um, and so we'll try and answer the other ones as well. So which one would you, which one? How can you determine if an illness is causing depression? Okay. And so that's a good question. So um, what I would say is for us to say you're clinically depressed, oftentimes we say that it is not as a result of something else, like okay. say drug use or um, like there are some conditions like hypothyroidism mm -hmm. that can present with depression. But that being said, you can also get depression as a result of having a chronic illness, yeah. like people who have HIV, for example, long term, people who are tired that they've been diagnosed with hypertension, chronic illness, mm -hmm. sickle cell, the person can eventually get depression okay. as a result. So um, once again, I say depression is something that has a complex interplay mm. of different things. And so 
once you come to the hospital we can determine that an illness is causing depression because we do tests yeah so if you have hypothyroidism your thyroid levels will be low and we'll treat that okay and we are expecting you'll be better i see and uh, i've heard lots of warnings about drug interactions with certain depression medicines what are they so i mean i can't give you a litany <laughs> but definitely with any medication that you're taking you have to be aware of drug to drug interactions. i see so um Okay. And I would want to answer, children do get depression. Okay. But they don't present the same way adults mm. do. All right. Well, let me just quickly, let me see if I have some more messages. Not exactly. Well, so we'll, we'll continue with this one that says that, how long does depression last and do children also suffer depression? Um, depression, the duration of depression, as I said, has to be at least two weeks mm -hmm. for it to be diagnosed as depression. But subsequently, how long it lasts is really person dependent. Okay. So I can't say. But do children suffer depression? Yes, they do. But children tend not to present with so many um, psychological things, but you'll find out the child being irritable. Mm. They are not um, doing as well in school, mm. etc. So children definitely get depression i well. see okay well send your messages as well let us know what you think and we're still trying to raise kwa on the line um to explain further but let's just read a few of them as well so bella depression is killing after having my baby i got depressed and my, and my well and it affected my work please let me have the doctor's telephone number okay and good morning to you and your viewers uh, this woman is really doing great may god bless her and all of you my name is original jr from Gwolu. Well, we've talked about depression associated with um, pregnancy and childbirth and all of that. And so I hope that we've been able to touch on that. But now let's come back to the celebrities. And you said that it's necessary that you speak out. Okay. Yeah. It's important. But is social media the place? <laughs> so um, I will not determine how someone chooses to express themselves. But so I will not say yes or no social media okay. is the place or not. But I would definitely say seek help. Yeah. However you feel you can get the help you need, it's important to seek help. But should I cut off social media when I'm undergoing treatment for depression? So personally, I would advise limited use of social media. Only because I mean you we know we have social media trolls, yeah. etc. So that's not the time you need negativity. You're already generating a lot of internal negativity. You don't need that reinforced by mm -hmm. other people. Yeah. So generally, I suggest cut it off. But how do I stay away from all these negative comments? And this is still for a lot of these celebrities out there because you're constantly on social media because you have to put your work out there mostly. And you see these people who are constantly speaking negative about you. But unfortunately, that's where you do your work. So you have to stay there. How then do I protect myself from some of these negative words that may eventually affect me and cause me to be depressed? So um, once again, that's why I talk about the psychology of somebody. And so there are people who are more resilient than others. They mm. can let um, things slide off their back. If you're not one of those people, I say go and have, see a psychologist. Mm. Psychologist, psychotherapy equips you with tools that enable you to cope with normal life stresses. Yeah. So there's no fear. Um, I don't think people should be afraid to say, I'm going to see a psychologist. Yeah. I need help. Okay. Because we are not afraid to take something yeah. if we have, say, hypertension. So Does it go away completely? So, um, no Or am I and going yes. to live with it forever? So, like any condition, so with mood disorders, we do say that it can go okay. and it can recur. Mm. So, it doesn't mean it will recur, it can recur. Like any condition, someone can get malaria twice a year. Someone can get malaria once in five years. Yeah. So, someone can get depression twice a year and mm. someone can get depression once in 10 years i see so um i don't i keep saying i don't want people to think of depression or mental illness separate from any from other that. okay medical condition all right um ky is back on the line and he like i mentioned wanted to explain further what he meant by you know being spiritually um dependent during this time if that's what he actually said Kewa. hello yes 
Please go ahead. No, I just wanted to clarify something. I, I didn't say that it is just entirely spiritual and then not uh, okay. clinical. I said that uh, as much as we want to look at it clinically, you should also find time to look at it spiritually. It's necessary because mm. uh, uh, it, it, you, you will find, when you go deeper, I've seen people also look for it, uh, look for the help clinically throughout for very, um, several years and have not found it. But once mm. they began to rely on God and pray to God, they found their help. Yeah. And I'm also saying also that I'm not saying you should, uh, it should be, um, you should be able to impress God and please God for, you know, th that state of depression to be rolled away. Mm. What I'm saying is that when it's a, it's a relationship based on what Jesus or God has done already for you. It means that once you are, your source is Jesus or God and you are dependent on him, afflictions will come. Yeah. Tough times will come. Difficult moments will come. Depression will come. Yeah. But when once you depend on him, it will roll away easily once your dependence is on him. That's all I'm saying. But okay. it's just like I'm... Yes, but when you have, it's like just like you have malaria, and I'm saying that seek help spiritually on malaria. No, there are times that you also have to seek help um, when it comes to medical, medical. and yeah. then clinically. It's very yeah. necessary. So I just wanted to clear the air so it doesn't look like I'm saying it's just spiritual. No, it's not like that. Okay. All right. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for clarifying that. I'm so grateful. And I've been speaking to Kewa on the phone and also Dr. Uh, one last, your final words before we go. Any advice for our okay, viewers? Okay, so my advice, I'm glad he's clarified and the spiritual definitely falls in the social management. Uh, my final words are when it comes to depression and any other mental illness, as much as possible, people should view it as they'll view any physical illness. Mm. Um, help is available seek help at all times at no point in time should you feel that you are a burden to society yeah and that you don't deserve help so that those are my last words all right and that's superintendent dr brigitte ajua neuropenia she is a psychiatrist and so thank you so much for speaking to us thank